Jessica Rose when I'm nice. <laughs> AKA Pearl when I'm naughty. I think Pearl wants to come out to play. I don't know if we're ready. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, that piece was just called Bag Lady. I pinned that for a um, stage production back in Detroit. And I'm so happy that a playwright from Detroit has come here today. She lives in Akron now, and I'm so glad that I was able to see her today, Raquel Draper. She put me in one of her. <laughs> My cups runneth over, 
<laughs> spilling on to your lifeline, revealing an orgasmic future filled with bliss. My snatch claps back, standing old with every orgasm. The doors to my hot box forever remain as long as your hands are available to deliver messages upon my skin. And actually, that piece, before I tweaked it into this, is in the Writing Nights Ford. Um, Writing Nights Press. What's that book called? Sword? No, Grand okay. Showcase. Grand Showcase, yeah, it's in there. The Wayward Sword is the name of it. Okay, okay. It's in the book, if you guys want to copy it. I also have books and CDs and the DVD of my stage play available today for sale. Or please see me, if, even if you don't wish to make a purchase, I have some for you to send you out with. Okay, Rocky, I'm going to give you your choice for my last piece. Uh -oh. Which one here? Just give me a genre of what I want to hear. What? Detroit? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three, one, three, baby. Yeah. This piece is called um, Detroit Love and War. The spirit of Detroit's head bows in shame. Uninviting images broadcast through the idiot box and the tangled web they weave, turning light minds all over the globe to mush with fear of the deep. Flights canceled. Overnight and extended stays delayed. Pictures of crime scenes on dilapidated streets with abandoned houses and vacant lots. Schools closed because kickbacks weren't thrown back. We're being laughed at, but uh, ain't nothing funny. Stop smiling. Still don't nothing move but the money. Mm -hmm. Emergency managers handling our cash. Smash and grab ATM ice. 24 hour lockdown. I can't even front that my city ain't messed up. But I've caught an infectious disease called Detroit love that I can't shake. No, I know I want to get rid of. I'm a deep girl. I'm a Girl, Detroit's favorite girl, ride not down as I rep for my suit. Forget what you heard. Poetically, I dispel prejudicial myths about the three words. Cops highlight a small percentage of thieves inside of these two. Hardcore pawners do not depict the spending habits of every person living outside of Eight Mile. Not all of our elected officials have hidden agendas. Detroit's title as murder capital was relinquished to another Michigan city, but our name remains fresh on tongues that aren't privy to that fact. Creative juices keeps our sanity intact. Musicians share their chemistry and poets care more. A pastor listens to us whine and Anita's my baker. Kid rocks the rabbit's m and Young Barry Gordy eyes sparkle at his dream girl. Together they scream in the red dawn after a 187. Let us transform the world's thinking cause ain't nobody fresher than my clique. Detroit, baby, we're the ugly ducklings with nothing to lose budding beautifully as swans. Our roses don't smell like boo-boo, but the stench from the breath of the uninformed to snub us does. This story is to be told and sold. We're the few, the strong, the proud, Brilliant, resilient, built for tough. Woo! Woo! Detroit hustles hard. Our roads have always been rocky. No matter how many times we fall, we'll dust our shoulders off before overcoming the next speed bump. We ain't no punks. We'll finish what the bully started, so don't get it twisted. Talk ill about the D and you might catch a Joe Louis South Park to your left jaw. Don't ever come aside. We're ready to bounce back off the ropes, and when we do, our old English D will be brighter than Batman's spotlight in the sky. We'll band together, prepared for flight. Our wings are long, and our determination intense, because when we play, we play to win. Now run, tell that to your friends. <laughs>
Give another round of applause. For Thing. So, how many of you have a bunch of books around your house that you just don't know what to do with? I do. <laughs> okay, well, you live with me, so you know what to do with them. Um, anyway, so upstairs we have a bookstore in our little art gallery. So, if anybody's looking to get rid of some books, it uh, doesn't matter what books they are. Basically, as long as they're not hate speech, so like, no mind cough. Aaron. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so um, we'll arrange to pick them up somehow. Um, we're going out to Chicago, so we might even be able to you know, swing up to Detroit or something. Yeah. Um, so, like, so if y'all want to put like a, a reading together, maybe we can do something. But it'll have to be soon because we're going up like two weeks from now. So, um, also, the other, the other uh, ad advertisement. So you know how we got some all, all kinds of free stuff over there. We also have. Free buttons that advertise um, Azrael Johnson's Dragon Bane, Dragon's Bane series. So the buttons are absolutely free. You can go grab some and uh, have them. And then if you like bookmarks, we have some of those too. Um, they advertise book two, Rust and Blood, and then book three, The Black God. Both are pretty cool. I think my nephew was reading some of The Black God earlier. So he'll tell you what he thought of it. And if he doesn't, I'll come here and stuff. Japanese band The Depacement, in an out-of-this-world adventure, author of words I'm not allowed to say, Corey Schrader, age nine, says, I did a book report on the first issue, and I got an A. The story is a very Beatles-esque setup and is literally described as a storyboard for an upcoming feature film. We have issue one and two available for free in promotion of their upcoming tour. Produced by Rebel Salmon Media. Woo. Our next performer, who should definitely engage in some sword fighting, waiting for her to do her promo. Um, we need a demo for her. We had one the other day. Also, I need to watch some Louis uh, Deschanel movies. Okay, whatever. Right. Describes herself with the following words Family. LGBT plus rights, criminal minds, Harry Potter, idealism, Narnia, love. Please welcome Andy Lyon. I was so damn intimidated by having to follow one single rose that I just did my whole set list. <laughs>
So um, this is by a person I met um, at Meat Grinder a few years ago named Kala. Looking in the mirror. Kala, man, woman, woman, man. I am not a woman, but I am not a man. I don't know why I dress this way, I just do, but I'm comfortable. Kala, boy, girl, he, she, she is, he, he is, she, ship. Grade school confusion, like, hey, are you a boy or a girl? Or, hey, that girl dresses like a boy, or that boy talks like a girl. You don't walk like a girl. Kala, walk like a girl. Kala, 26, fake imposter, pretender, substitute, like, if she can't find a good man, she'll settle for you, like, my baby daddy don't take care of my kids, but you do, Kala. Dirty, filthy, vile, perverted, like, you fucking pervert, stay away from my kids, they'll never turn out like you, Kala. You half man, half woman, Kala. Border mar margin, you rock back and forth, Kala, pick a side. Don't teeter, you can't play the middle forever. You can't trust someone that doesn't have a definite stance, Kala. This is your war. Your body, your God, your religion, your happiness, war, grenade and trenches, come out of the trenches, put down your ammunition, Kala, pick. Are you going to be a woman, Kala, you fake fucking man, Kala, broken, but there's a fix, Kala, prayer, speak. Sorry, I can't read my handwriting. Okay, Kala, prayer. Spit, blend, air, sound from my mama's lips. Kala, mama, gaze. Worry, mama, uh, worry, mama's worried. Your mother worries for your soul. Your mother hates the way you styled your life. Kala, you are her prayer, her case, her faith. If God fixes you, he can fix anything. And mama will be able to move mountains, command fires from heaven. Exercise your demons, set your spirit free. Kala, you fucking miracle, you fucking curse, you fucking stud, you fucking bag of dust and demon and foul spirit. Kala, you don't love, you lust. Kala, you lust. Kala, you phase. You transition, you change, but you'll be back someday. Jesus saved him. If that tells you anything, I'm telling you. God just shoved him back in the closet. That man is redecorating the closet. <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> this is a true story. All right, this is called My Mom's Kitchen. My birth father liked my relationship status update on Facebook and sent me an immediate message of congratulations and prime for juicy details. My ex gay stepdad doesn't know, but he's the one I wanted to talk to. I took the broom from my mother so she could rest her newly aching knees. She took a deep breath and asked, Have you been dabbling in homosexuality again? <laughs> word for word, that's what she said. Mom, I have never stopped dabbling in homosexuality. <laughs> I have a girlfriend, that's just how it ends. Turns out she was more concerned about me returning to witchcraft. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I texted my friends with the outcome of this week-long impending talk and they rolled their eyes and that there goes your mom again sort of way, but there was victory in the kitchen that day. Some of the big, biggest victories are quiet. The loudest our voices got was when we tried to shoo the kids back upstairs so we could continue our grown-up conversation. My last few dates with the ex-cop enlisted the comment, well at least he's a guy, from my evangelical mother. In the kitchen that day, me sweeping the floor so she could rest her increasingly aching knees, gray hair showing two inches from the last time she could afford to diet. I realized how old we've gotten. Her mentality wrapped itself around my hands and propelled the doom in broom into dusty corners for her. You know how I feel about it, she said. I'm 
missing half of this poem on this page. Right. Well, anyway. Um, something about mom doesn't like it, but she's not going to be super pissy and judgmental and she'll just fucking deal with it. Anyway. Mama, I want you to see our matching smiles. I'm talking about my girlfriend now. And be proud of how my self-worth has grown. Mama, I want you to be impressed with her manners. Stick out that baby picture of me with peas smashed all over my face and admire her cowboy boots. Mama, I don't need her, but I want her. She always wanted me to rise above that bullet hole that missed her temple and scarred our kitchen table. The way she still hates looking in the mirror and the man she married because she was certain no one else would love her. I wanted to tell her that her little girl's heart is safe in promises of forever following morning after breakfast. Instead, I said, the kids don't know. We embrace. I love you, she murmured into my ear. I know. I don't want to lose you again. Mama, I'm okay. One lifetime passed in bruises and church services. One lifetime passed in a foster home on the other side of the state. Another in drugs and custody battles. We had to die over and over and be reborn to be able to hold each other in our kitchen with differing opinions far less than love. Yellow dead the lion tattoo on my chest. True story. See? Boop. Nope, that's the bird. Dandelion's over here. I got a yellow dandelion tattoo on my chest so it would never leave me. Like the dandelions in my parents' front yard that they keep running over with the lawnmower. No amount of weed killer has ever been able to stop them. Like the dandelion, there were times I survived out of pure obstinance, and no ob obstacle has ever been able to stop me. Weeds are misunderstood flowers. That's why they're my favorite. I'd rather my lover stop for goldenrod on the side of the road than present me with a dozen roses. Despite their publicity, I've never seen a rose grow in the middle of a sidewalk. But a dandelion seeds ride on the wind, oblivious to boundaries, like me seeking out my limitations just to defy them. Pull over on the side of the back road. Get out of your car and stop to smell the daisies and the honeysuckle and the Queen Anne's lace. Roses are fragile and need special attention and care, but those damn dandelions will grow anywhere. <laughs> You wouldn't have to chase God's voice because everything would be a sign. And the clouds are falling and I'm not who I am and none of this is happening and the voices are calling. Andy, they're drugging you. They don't want you to know the truth. Don't go to work. Don't take your pills. Don't be a slave. Andy, you are great. A God, a messenger, a savior, a slave. And the clouds are pressing in on all sides. All the world is a diorama. I am a cardboard cutout. The sky is painted on the inside of a shoebox. And my brain is moving too fast. Internal car crash. 
Press the metal pedal to the floor. Andy, you know you miss the feeling of blood dripping down your arms. Andy, scream, fight, hit, flip tables. Andy, destroy, don't keep it inside. I can't breathe this icy vapor clouds pressing in on all sides. My lungs crystallize. The clouds seep inside. Nothing is real, breath is gone. Suffering is only necessary until I realize that it is not. And today, my eyes are frozen shut. That happened while I was driving on the highway. Stand by. I decided to change the last, the last poem I was going to do. Because this is also like about my psycholis psychosis and mood disorder, but it's like, what do you say? It's called the voice of truth. When the voices grab me, I slip away into a world the size of a shoebox. They tell me that I am on my own. It's a delusional dollhouse of plastic reality. Some people laugh when I try to explain the makeup of my brain, and some people look away and fidget with their hands, and some shake their heads and offer to pray. No one nods and said, yeah, I've been there, stuck in a feeling of unreality where your hands seem foreign, like they belong to someone else, and every movement, movement is seen as if you're floating above your body. So when the clouds in a blue sky feel like a threat, when the voices whisper in my head, I withdraw until I'm the only one left in my world. I sip tea with darkness and wrap it around me like a blanket as I drift off to dreamland. When the prescription I'm handed burns my fingertips, sending fire alarms blaring, red lights flashing in my hand, when choking down my pills feels like pur purging, the voices whisper that I am solitary. This is a lie. No matter what the voices tell me, my lover sleeps beside me every night, and cramped at our feet is our dog, who licks my face in excitement, no matter how paranoid I get. Down the hall is my daughter, who I snuggle as we say bedtime prayers. She does not hear the voices. She does not care about the walls around me. She creep, reaches across my barriers to hug me goodnight. There is a woman who will always answer my call and listen, even though she doesn't quite understand. And my glitter unicorn soul twin, who sends me pictures of smiling starfish, thank you cats, and little turtles telling me I can do this. I can do this. I can send this delusion back to the land of make-believe. The voices do not exist outside of me. I have defeated them over and over and over my whole life, and tonight is no exception. But when I start to believe the voices telling me I'm better off alone, that they are my true companions, please hold my hand until they fade, like I'm hanging off the edge of a cliff and don't let go until it's over. Another round of applause for Andy. Andy's one of my favorite poets ever, so. Aww, I um, like you too. So, uh, the uh, dandelion poem reminded me of one of my favorite memes. It's got a picture of a rose, and it says, My pH balance is off, I'm going to die. Uh, yeah. And then the dandelion on the next picture is like, Fuck yeah, concrete! <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Um, speaking of free stuff, so you see this banner right here? This is not going away for free. However, I do have five other banners that I do not need anymore because there's no more grand showcase because it's going to be over in like, an hour, like less than an hour. So if anybody wants a memento, I have two banners like this that are not vinyl, they're just paper. And then I have three banners that have like the little version of the banner and then like one of them says poetry, fiction, uh, mixed media, one says fiction, one says nonfiction. I know that some others have on it. So if you want any of those, let me know and I will give them to you. Um, um, all right. Hour 
next performer is last year's grand tournament winner. And Sonny got me a manuscript book. I'm just wondering. Another five years. I'm just wondering. <laughs> the bio is as follows. Cartwheels and recites poetry. No promises. But sometimes it does both. Please welcome Zach Ashley. <laughs> some of the seats, it's okay, I, I don't bite much. Um, and just come on in if you feel comfortable, if you don't, that's fine too. But I'd, I'd really like to invite you guys to come on in and, and share the energy with each other and share the rest of the event with each other. Yeah. And, you know, awesome. <laughs> Bathrooms are important. That's that makes fun of us. That's awesome. Cool. Yes. Yes, 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 yes! Yeah. I came to your show, your event, your display. I took time out of my busy day to support the event you're putting on tonight. To make good on the RSVP I posted on your Facebook invite. But now that I'm here, I confess the main reason I came. And I think that it's wrong that we keep playing these games. So Show me the table quick, before I become unglued, stop talking to me, and point me towards the free food. <laughs> maybe it's sandwiches, maybe it's cookies and juice. Just point me to the munchies and watch me let loose. I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm just telling you the deal. You want to get me someplace quick? Offer me a free meal. <laughs> Any sort of sustenance puts me ahead. I love y'all. But I'm broke as fuck and I'm trying to get fed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fuck money. Food is the universal currency. The one thing you can offer any attendee. And if you want to see me in an ecstatic state, then send my ass home with a leftover plate. Yeah. If I can get, dude, if I can get an extra meal out of this endeavor, then I promise you, friends, I will love you forever. I want to support your art. It means the world to me. The only thing better is finding out that you will feed me for free. So it's interesting. You brought up something about a um, a poet who, you know, wrote something you wish you could write. I'm going to share you guys. I'm going to share with you guys a poem from a poet I could never write like. Um, I, have a, I have a prison pen pal in Illinois, and um, verbatim, this is a poem that he wrote and sent to me. All right. And I'm, I'm super excited because people five feet away from him don't hear a thing he has to say, and now people two states away will. And, yeah. What's his name? His name is Terrace Love, and I kid you not, he was born on February 14th. <laughs> that's why that's yeah. his name. Yeah, go for it. It's not a cool thing. To my shadow who I fight, my insane dreams help ease the pain I face each and every night. Freedom is what I hunger. Happiness is what I thirst. Friendship is what I long to have, but inner peace comes first. At night, I lay sleepless in never-ending pain. If I were to release my emotions, tears would flow like rain. I live in a dungeon that's 12 by 10 and cold. The writing on the cell walls from other inmates tell stories that are untold. In life, people wonder what they must fear is. I tell you, close your eyes and think real hard what prison life is. As 
I'll be up here all night, so you gotta tell me when I got like five minutes left or something. Okay. okay. Well, you I'll be around six a.m. Okay. Cool. Cool. Hey, Max. I I brought a set. I don't work too Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dear Moo, I smiled back at you last night. I hope you saw it. Don't ever let anyone tell you that your craters aren't beautiful. Yes. Dear son, I know. I don't always want you around. Don't ever take that to mean that I want you to leave. Dear tree, right now, you are a tiny sapling in my front yard, but never acknowledge any limit to how tall you can grow. Dear God, maybe tomorrow. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> Dear Mom, I still haven't forgotten myself for how free I felt after you died. Dear ex-girlfriend, nothing you ever did will make you deserve what I did. I will spend the rest of my life knowing that. I hope you will too. Dear internet, I hate how much time I waste on you, but I love the world that you are capable of showing me. Dear karate, I know you are not the source of everything good in me, but nothing has ever brought it out so easily. Dear life, you are a confused, hot fucking mess. <laughs> to me, that makes us perfect. <laughs> Dear poetry, how about tonight? Thanks for waking up. Dear friends, I'm sorry I suck at calling, or <laughs> yeah. writing, or communicating at all. <laughs> this is not an indication of the place you hold in my heart. Dear world, sometimes I need to hide. Fuck you for needing so many things worth changing. Dear love of my life, I wake up every day. I don't deserve you. I have no idea if that means we're in an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> Dear kids, I love you, but I don't want to live with you. Dear religion, you are beautiful. Dear people who practice religion just because your religion is beautiful does not mean you are doing good fucking things with it. Yes! Dear sleep, more please. <laughs> Dear popcorn, more please. <laughs> Dear cartwheels. Wow! Holy shit! More please! <laughs> Dear defeat. Dear hopelessness. Dear giving up. Maybe tomorrow. Don't wait up. Woo! Nice. Woo! and defeat our God? You know, you write the poem about that. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I can't tell. Alright. Okay. This is an old one I've been going back to because, you know, fall is coming up. And, you know. This is called The Masochist Gets a Flu Shot. <laughs> I see people in the waiting room, their faces full of doom and gloom. Maybe they don't like needles and shots, but for them I'll always have a socks. <laughs> oh, I love the needle in my arm and how my grin makes the nurse alarm. If that nurse has that special touch that makes the needle not hurt so much, I tell her, stick that fucker all the way in, pull it out and then ram it in again, <laughs> twist the needle a couple times while I make up these painful rhymes. <laughs> that nurse looks kind of hot. You think she could give me an extra blue shot? Ram that needle all the way through. You think I could get some shots in my legs too? Wait a minute. What? Where are you going, nurse? Can't you make these things hurt worse? Maybe if you use those ivy spikes. Always wonder what those feel like. <laughs> Can you serve me the suffering I crave? Use all your needles and make me your slave. The nurses aren't playing along, I'm afraid. Oh my god, was a freaking band-aid. <laughs> and rather than ram an extra needle through my tongue, 
Out the front door I was flung. They looked at me like I'm insane, but all I wanted is a little pain. But hey, time is all I've got. I'll just head to the clinic down the street for another blue shot. <laughs> funny like the the pain we experience in life and like and people who go through car accidents and just all sorts of ridiculous things you bring a poem about a tiny little needle and like you see so many people in the audience scream and like it's like that's fascinating me it, it really is have you ever met your guardian angel golden halo shining like a baby smile Soft light falling on strong wings, covered in white feathers, hands pressed together, ever in prayer. Eyes, always angled up, ready to receive the righteous instruction. If by chance you have met your angel, and they match this description, I would like you to know that though I may be small in stature and unable to match you in a fair fist fight, my guardian angel will kick your guardian angel's bully ass. She's never seen the celestial waiting room. She's never been in God's routine rotation. A guardian angel like mine is only summoned for special occasions. My friends, I am that special occasion. Yeah. <laughs> when I was four, I left my apartment, wandered westward to see the world. Three blocks away, peace took me by the hand and walked me back to my mom, who was sobbing, terrified that I had been taken. A week later, I wandered off again. This world is a scary place, and I've never been smart enough to be scared. I've made too many yeah. mistakes, hung out with too many drunk family members, and been far too damn trusting to be alive and healthy today. Peace is pale from keeping me up from peace is pale from keep from staying up too many nights when I can't sleep, and when I do sleep, peace is working on our website. Its content is illegal in most states because truth and hope have officially been declared pornographic. Yeah. They are offensive. They are disgusting. So now in the truest sense of the word, my guardian angel is a professional lover. Yeah. Mm. If she were a man, the number of souls she's touched would be nothing more than notches on her bedpost. But peace is more powerful than any man. I sometimes close my eyes and pretend that I am something strong, but for all my big words and bullshit, the only reason I am still standing here is because I have a 110 pound punk rock chick standing over me. A lit cigarette in one hand and God's promise in the other. She's tough when I can't be and even tougher when I'm stupid enough to think I'm strong enough. So if you see her flying through your dreams, don't be afraid. But please, though, get out of her way. <laughs> Chances are, I'm in trouble again. <laughs> She's on her way to rescue me. And in a world as dangerous as ours, peace can never come fast enough. who suffer severe allergies. You don't know how to appreciate a spring day until you can't smell a thing with all that smog in the way. You're trying to enjoy a picnic, but your sinuses are swollen from that filth flowers put in the air. I think it's called pollen. Allergies can be horrible dating a girl who's hot. She might need to kiss you and get a face full of snot. And it isn't because you're allergic to her, but she has a cat and her clothes are covered in its fur. I can't even go into stores with carpet on the floors without sneezes blowing me backwards through the front door. If they didn't want me blowing my bugle nose in their sight, they, er they would eradicate their carpet mold and their dust mites. Some women, not talking about y'all. In fact, I'm not even talking about just women. Let's not be gender specific here. People do this. Some people will wear this 
putrid perfume. Smells so strong that it pollutes the whole room. Would they wear so much if they really understood that there are people like me who can't breathe because they gotta stink so good? But going to work is the worst. It is the height of unjust when you walk into your office and you can smell the dust. And management won't vacuum or clean out the vents and they just don't get what that pile of boogery Kleenex on your desk represents. So this is for the people who've considered buying stock in puffs. Because no matter how many boxes they buy, it's never enough. For the ones who must examine the mucus in their tissues to gauge the extent of their allergenic issues. For those that blow their nose so loud the whole world can hear. Rejoice, brothers and sisters. Your time is near. I salute you, my friends, with a loud exhalation of nasal goo. <laughs> blow your nose proudly. Let no allergen silence you. At the time, that was like the most politically charged piece I ever wrote. I, I thought it was great. What's my, how, am I good on time? Two more. Two more, two more, all right. Mm, no, we're gonna go with this one. All right. This is a persona poem about Reverend Fred Phelps, a man who I do not agree with at all. If you don't know who he is, goddamn, your life is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night again. The sound of my father's fetid breath flooding my right ear. He always collapses on the right side when he's done with I'd like to tell you the truth about whether that is a memory from my childhood or just a horrible nightmare, but truth and I became estranged a long time ago. I can almost remember what it was like to fight for somebody, the way I always wished my mother had fought for me. Once upon a time, my family led the fight against Jim Crow. It's why I became a lawyer. You didn't see white people fighting for civil rights in Kansas back then unless their last name was Phelps and we won. Yeah. Ask blacks in government. Ask the NAACP. I did what it took to win because I knew the cause was just. I always hoped it would be enough to chase the nightmares away. There's an elation that comes with the pride of triumph when you know you're on the side of righteousness. But at night, when the trials were done and the judgments read, I went home and still found it difficult to breathe under the crushing weight of my father's thumb and the blank stare of my useless mother, all the intelligence and accomplishments in the world. Don't silence the voices of your past. Every time someone predicts the end of days, I actually find myself hopeful. I pray for an end to this so hard, you could call it assisted suicide. Wow. You don't have to fight the, you don't have to fear hell when you are living in one. God blessed me with the same gifts as David Koresh, Pat Robertson, Charles Manson, Donald fucking Trump. Woo! No one can call it dishonesty. If you are preaching the truths you built, shout anything loud enough and long enough and it'll drown out the last pieces of you that the desecration of your childhood didn't destroy. Woo! Go forth, my children. Remind the world that punishment is God's business and business is good. Go forth, my children, fill the ghosts of my fists as you fill the footpaths of funerals for soldiers and armed forces I would never join. Go forth, my children, wave your colorful signs, your beautiful, hateful works of art. Remember, Hitler was once an artist too. that L, G, B, and T were anything more than letters in the alphabet. I loved rainbows. Colors and I attracted each other like vivid magnets and they followed me around 
like lovesick pets. Red was always close to my heart. It was safe because it had orange around it. Blue made its home in my head. Yellow hung out in my hands. Green kept my feet forever moving, and indigo wove its way through me like an almighty life force. Before bed, when other kids were saying prayers, they didn't really understand or maybe telling God what they wanted for Christmas. I was going on adventures through rainbows, miles long, floated through the color, letting each pigment mix with the one before, saturating my soul until it looked like it had been spray painted by dysfunctional deities. I never did finish these journeys away. I was always asleep by the time I hit indigo, and past indigo was five, where my dreams were. As long as I was in this cradle of consummate color, I was invincible. But somewhere along the way, something convinced me that I needed to outgrow my globe the way leaves outgrow their trees, and I've been falling ever since, floating further away from everything fantastic. God damn it! I used to have superpowers. I used to see amazing things, not just my own colors. I used to see shaded stains on everybody. People walking down the street, leaving tinted trails behind them. The whole world so full of brilliance. It was an astounding experience, just walking out the front door. I used to love everyone I met. I used to mean it when I smiled. I used to be amazing. There's no orange left around my heart. I upgraded to this cold gray, built a wall so thick no rainbow will ever reach it, and I keep myself busy, 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 so that I never have to think about it. I am intentionally overloading my schedule, so I am always running off in every direction, except up. And I know, no, that I am too young to be talking this shit, and we can spend days trying to one-up each other on whose life got the greater share of despair. But if you've forgotten what it's like to be blown back by how amazing you are, this poem is about you too. Your desaturated dreams don't even begin to add up to the degrees of brilliance you deserve. Take your sword and cut through the beige and the gray of every piece of pain that you have used to define you. Quit hating other people for robbing you of your rainbows. And you know what? Quit blaming yourself for letting them go. Yeah. Do you remember what it was like to play? Do you remember what it was like to see colors so pure? They made you believe in a god. Well, I almost do too. So tonight, instead of praying, I am going to go on the prowl for prisms. I might tentatively tiptoe into red, but I will dive into orange, and motherfuckers, you better be there. It's not even a long trip. Bring your blankets and your teddy bears and leave your laptops behind, because tonight we are going to run through rainstorms of radiance straight towards the sun, and if we get separated along the way, it's okay. Don't you ever, ever stop chasing those rainbows. When you get there, I'll be waiting for you. Won't even be hard to recognize me. I'll be the heart full of red, blue on my head. I will be waiting for you just past indigo. I will take your hand, and we can voyage together into violet, followed by everyone we have forgotten how to love, y'all. You don't even have to sleep. Just remember how to dream. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.